And good morning, everybody, from Sibley's West Gift Shop in downtown Chandler. It's a kind of an overcast uh, Saturday morning, um, about 82 degrees, so it's very nice that way. And uh, here at Sibley's West, we have a special guest today, and it's Barb Beavers. And she is a ceramic artist from Eloy um, in that part of Arizona. And um, she's doing a little trunk show, and she is what we call an earthy pottery, a potter, because she incorporates uh, various natural elements into her pieces. And so welcome, Barb. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's fun. And uh, can you describe a few of the pieces that you've brought along? I'd love to. Um, we'll start with what I love to do probably the most is harvesting choya. And so after I harvest choya, and they have to have pieces with some character or charm to them, I thoroughly bleach them and clean them and then stain them according to what, uh, what the finished product, how I envision that to be. Mm -hmm. After the firing process and assuming the piece of choya still fits on the piece, then I spend uh, two to three hours lashing individual pieces into the, to the pottery itself and decorating them with a variety of different elements, whether it's uh, turquoise and I, I have a brother that is uh, the harvest pheasants in Nebraska, so I am the recipient of beautiful feathers. So I, I enjoy just the, the natural part of this with the clay and the choya. Mm -hmm. um, this is a piece that has beautiful polished I'm drawing a blank right now. Polished, petrified wood. Oh, okay. And the, I'm very tactile, so that uh, has a nice feel to it. Mm -hmm. Another interesting piece is a, a piece that is a decorative coffee table piece. Uh -huh. it, underneath it is a shed antler. Oh. And so it's a, it's a nice conversation piece on a coffee mm -hmm. table. The green turquoise beads on this come from an Indian trading post north of Flagstaff called mm -hmm. Shohonto. Mm -hmm. And it's got some Heshi beads in it as well, which are drilled shells. How do you get that wavy look in, in clay? Well, I just, I, I work with it uh, fairly damp so that I don't have cracking on the clay. Mm -hmm. And just, it, it's a manipulation of the clay while it's relatively damp. The, the trick of some of this is is because clay has a shrinkage rate of between 10 and 12 percent typically that if you some pieces you have to form and then allow additional room because once that shrinks and dries the piece will no longer fit mm -hmm. that happens often in whether the choya or the sticks as well so it's just it's a manipulation of the moist clay and you said that's a, a shed antler yes so the ant uh, deers uh, will shed their antlers every year to grow new ones and so mm -hmm. these are found antlers no no deer has been harvested to get that antler Oh, okay. So that's that's important uh -huh. as well. Um, other pieces are, this is kind of a quilted, uh, actually I'm going to skip to this one. This is more of a quilted piece. Uh -huh. I've actually torn between 40 and 45 pieces of clay, textured each of those pieces, put it all back together to form the vase. So you can tell where each piece is, and here's a leaf design, and... Uh, just some different textures. I'm very tactile, so mm -hmm. I love textures. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then something else over here? This is more of an applique process of clay, so I've actually okay. not only carved into the clay, but I've actually, like a, like a quilter, uh -huh. have applied clay uh, as a dimensional thing coming out of the clay itself. Uh -huh. And so, um, what, uh, what, what's the aim with your art? What is your hope that people, when they see it? That it's something different, uh -huh. um, that it's unique, that, um, that it's typically Southwest, uh -huh. that it's a piece of art. I, I am not a functional potter, nor am I a production potter. Uh -huh. So I like to focus on just individual details of every piece, and I just, uh -huh. I like that when I go purchase things, and I, uh -huh. I like it that other people enjoy uh -huh. it too. And how did you get started? Well, a 
about in 2007, I had always wanted to enjoy the process of clay and work was uh, kind of in the way of playing. So I did take the time to drive to a, an art guild in mm -hmm. northern Indiana and I spent several years there learning the art of clay. I started throwing first and then mm -hmm. moved into hand building and I have found my niche with hand building. And are you a native of Indiana? I am. Uh huh. Which I part? Uh, up around South Bend, Indiana. Uh, okay. Yes. And then uh, how long have you been in Arizona? Five years now. About so five years. So this is our permanent forever home. Okay. And you're in Eloy. Yes. And how did you end up in Eloy? There's a Robeson retirement community there, so I'm a part. I live um, in that beautiful Robeson okay. ranch sure. retirement community. I have my own kiln. I enjoy just working at my own pace and firing uh, when when there's a kiln full. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, some more in the process now to have another firing, hopefully next week. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much for being a part of Sibley's West. Uh, we uh, really, it's interesting that with ceramic art, uh, we've probably got about 12 or 14 different potters, but each has a different approach in terms of glaze or functional or uh, different designs or yours with the earthy elements. And so thanks a lot for being a part of Sibley's. Thank you.